Hey there do-it-yourself technicians. Today I want to talk about how your home and small business connect to the internet. Let's get all those cables sorted. We had a look last week at how the internet works on a global scale. So today we're going to bring it back local and see how it works and connects in your home or small business. First, let's clarify this small business thing. Everybody has a different definition of what a small business is. For me, it's any business with less than about 25 people sharing an office, or in this case, an internet connection. And every one of those that I've ever dealt with uses the same internet connection as the average home. They may pay for a faster tier of access and have a larger download allocation, but the technology that connects them to the internet is exactly the same. So how does everybody get connected? Well, there's actually a bunch of different ways to be connected. Here in Australia, the government is rolling out the NBN, or the National Broadband Network. I'm not going to get into the politics of that, that's for somebody else to do. But I will say, the technology is rolling out, and it is, I believe, almost done. But even here, there's about five different ways that you can be connected. The best and fastest connection type is fibre optic. The little glass fibre optic cable sneaks all the way into your home and connects directly to your network. Here in Australia, on the NBN, that's known as fibre to the premises, or FTTP, and looks like this. The optical cable comes into the box on the outside of the house, which is then pumped into another box on the inside of the house and connected to your router. In some countries, fibre connection speed can be gigabit connections and even larger. So this is definitely the way to go if you can get that sort of connection. Fibre to the building, or fibre to the node, is very much like the old ADSL connections we used to have and are still prevalent in many places around the world. The internet connection device is connected via the copper wires in your house to a DSLAM somewhere in your neighbourhood or out on your street. These connections vary greatly in speed and are probably amongst the most common worldwide. Cable internet or HFC is probably the next most common connection globally and certainly very common in the USA. The internet and often a pay TV service come in on a coaxial cable that is then connected to your router and your pay TV system. These cables then join with all of your neighbourhood cables to go back to your provider. Fibre to the curb or FTTC is a fairly new method of connecting the NBN in Australia. The fibre connection runs to a small connection box out in the street that services usually up to four homes. So you're getting the connection pretty much to your door but with that last bit using a VDSL connection, similar to the fibre to the node. This connection is capable of over 100 megabits per second and is only shared with those other three neighbours. This is what we have here for our home and family and happily supports six people, including two teenagers. A fixed wireless connection uses the same Wi-Fi that we're familiar with in laptops, but using a very different antenna and broadcast system is able to travel many, many kilometres. In Australia, this is being used for rural communities that can't access the cabled network. The connection is similar, but with a small antenna mounted outside the house and then cabled back in to the internet connection device, and from there to your router. In other places where cabling is a problem, your router can be set to connect to the local 3 or hopefully 4 or even soon 5G network. This means your router can be placed wherever it is in your house as long as it's close to a power point that gives the best reception. And effectively, it's just like a giant mobile phone connecting you to the internet. In many ways, it works like the internet access device that we used in Victorian schools for remote learning, linked above. These are great if you don't want a cable, especially if you're renting or something like that. But the connection can be a bit hit or miss. My Optus router actually has a backup 4G connection so that if my internet goes down, it can flick over to that and still keep me connected, which I think is a really cool inclusion. The final type of connection is satellite. This uses a dish mounted usually on the roof of your house to connect to a low orbit satellite, which then beams your data back down to other receiving stations. It's generally not the fastest connection, but the best you can get in remote areas of the country where none of the other options exist. So with all of those different options, it's a little bit difficult to give you a guide on how to plug everything in. In Australia, they've tried to standardise around the internet connection device, which plugs into power and then plugs into whichever device has brought your network connection in, and that should all be done for you. From there, you just need to plug your router 
into the internet connection device and into power and everything should be connected and hopefully you'll get some sort of blinky light to tell you you've got an internet connection. From there you can plug the network cables into your router for anything that needs a wired connection and connect to the wireless using the details supplied either on a sticker on the modem or a card that came with the installation kit. Internet providers, at least in Australia, have generally made this really really simple and have step-by-step -step manuals a little bit like a Lego manual that anybody can follow. Believe in yourself, you can do it. Just follow the steps one by one, get it all plugged in, turned on, and give it a go. If you run into trouble, give your internet provider a call and they will step you through the process. Don't be afraid of it. Question of the day. What sort of internet connection do you have? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll even try and find some polling software so that we can get a nice graphical representation of what all of our users use to connect to the internet. Look for that up here. If you found this video useful, give us a thumbs up as well. Thank you. The Tech Doctor exists to help you become your own technician. Learn about the technology, protect yourself from the bad guys and repair it if it breaks. If you're watching this on YouTube, there's some other videos you may not have seen before here and here. And you can click on the Tech Doctor logo down here to subscribe and then ring the bell to make sure you're notified of any new episode as it comes out. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you on the next episode.